say he wants to do big in our life. We want to uh, give him. Well, don't we we want to uh, give our guest just a minute here, Jameson. Uh, he's uh, we've met him through James and Sarah, and they, they came to the wedding. And also, uh, we met him at a, a, a movie we was uh, watching together, and they were there, and they were telling us all about their ministry, how they go out every Saturday, I believe, isn't it? And they feed and talk to people on the streets, and they minister to them and uh, help them in many ways. And his wife is a rapper. I'd li- I would like for her to come and rap for us one day. But why don't you just say a word to us and just t- tell us what's going on in your life and okay. how y'all are doing. Just to- God is good. Yeah. It's an honor to be here today. God bless everyone here. I've just walked in the door. I felt the presence of God. And just to welcome you, everyone seems very like your family and you just welcomed us in. And I really appreciate that. Um, it's an, like I said, it's an honor to be here with Colleen and you, uh, slipping, uh, starts at the D, right? Dale. Dale. Earnhardt. Okay. Just don't drive like him. <laughs> so yeah, uh, our ministry, the Lord's, it's really the Lord's ministry. It always has been the, the Lord gave us a prayer or, uh, gave me a dream. Uh, about four years ago, and he said, name it Hope Dealers. So I was like, okay, Lord, I thought it was, just, first I thought it was my dream, but then the Lord gave it the exact same dream two weeks later. He's like, no, name it Hope Dealers. So I, we named it that. It just started out with a few of us going out to the streets, and now there's like 20 of us. We go out every week, and we feed the, the, the homeless, and we just minister to people, cast demons out of people. Uh, we go to 61st in Peoria area in Tulsa, and we just go out there and just share the love of Jesus. Yeah. Now, see, I'm in a season right now where I, all this super spiritual stuff, all that whacked out stuff is good. But if it's not coming from a place of love, Amen. the Lord has me in a, in a season where I'm, I'm wanting to be everything I do, everything I say needs to be from a place of love. Because if it's not, one day he's going to say, depart from me for I never knew you. You know, whenever he says, well, I did works in your name. I did this in your name. I did that in your name. If it was because it was from a place of flesh and not from a place of love, not from a place of his spirit. So I want to encourage you just to, to really seek the, the presence of the Lord in these times. Time is short. Time is so short. And he's calling his people back to the secret place. Get quiet before the Lord so you can hear his heart. Because he's speaking right now. He is speaking, and we need to hear what the Father's heart is saying in this time, in this hour. So just thank you for letting me talk. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really proud of Sarah and James. They've, it's, uh, they've done so many things. You know, I've, I've done a, many, a lot of weddings. I don't know how many, probably several hundred. Uh, uh, several over the years, you know, I don't count them all up, but I know. But I started crying during their wedding, which is I've never done before. <laughs> but it was like the Lord had a word for me. He said, it doesn't make any difference where you came from or what your past is. He said, I can take two broken people and I can make a wholeness out of them. Come on. It doesn't make any difference what your past is, but it just touched me in such a way. It was like a word of prophecy, but it was uh, God saying, I'm going to heal the broken. You know, that was one of his promises that he's going to heal the brokenhearted. And, but God can bring people together. And whatever you're dealing with or facing tonight, uh, there's hope for you. There's deliverance for you. There's freedom. There's a new life, a new beginning. I'd like for you to give James and Sarah a good hand. I don't want to take their time here, but come up here and just, ha- just however you want to do it. God bless you. Sarah, we're so, so glad to see you. I'm so glad. James, we appreciate you. Do you want this mic? Yeah, I want that loud. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. Well, I can get that, get that way. So, yes, uh... So I've missed you guys. I walked in and I was like, oh, I have missed it, you know. But 
uh, changes, the change has been really good. Um, being married is so different, you know, in a lot of ways, and, um, but it's all good, you know what I mean? And I know that God has brought us together. Um, if you are struggling right now in your marriage, uh, for whatever reason, if you will both put God first, and it's not even about whatever, whatever is like, you know, uh, y'all's disagreements on, if you will just pray about what God, how God wants you to view the thing, because the devil will come in and he wants to steal that, and it's a daily thing. It's like, I guarantee you in a spiritual aspect that me and James's bedroom, in a spiritual view, if you would look at it, you would see chalk outlines all on the floor on each side of our bed because you've got to, in every situation, in every realm of your life, wake up and die to yourself. Wake up and die to yourself. And then sometimes, because we are still alive and we're still in this world, you've got to go and you've got to die again. It's the question, are you willing? Are you, sometimes the bigger person is the one who's going to give in the first, you know? Yeah, that's it. Anyways, on to something else. Um, anyways, I love you. I love getting to know you. Um, all right, so I had uh, this vision come, and it's like of how Jesus would see us, churches nowadays, uh, I'm saying a lot of them, and places you meet in the morning, you know, you're coming in. It's like this big stadium, and you've got these football players, and they're all coming in. And uh, they're getting the play, and they're getting suited, souped up, and they're hearing from the coach, like, all right, you know, uh, this is what we're going to do, this is what you mean, and then I'm going to do this. I mean, and he's got the, you got the plays down, you got the, you know, it's written, and you're all, yep, you get, and you go out there, and then, you know, Jesus is watching, and he's like, yeah, 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 and then all of a sudden, and nobody goes out to the field. They just all kind of walk away, you know what I mean, and next Sunday, they go back out and they get the play, and they're getting fed some more, and they're getting fed some more, and then you're getting, you know what I mean? And then it's the same thing. It's like, it's repetitive. Don't get me wrong. The door's always open to get more, get more food, to get fed more. But what are you going to do with it? Every single body in here has a purpose. If you are in the body of Christ, you have a purpose. And let me tell you what the purpose feels like, you know, so if you're thinking, and it's not mediocre. Whenever you do finally find your purpose and you walk into it, it's those dreams that you had when you was little. It's that, it's that feeling. that ne It's like, okay, so when I was little, I had all these dreams about flying. I mean, you couldn't tell me. I was like, Dad, I'm going to wake up and be Superman when I grow up. And he's like, all right, all right. You know, because I would dream over and over. And then as I got older and the drugs came in and like a... Uh, lust or love, what you think is love, or just like the uh, adrenaline, you think, man, this is, what I was, this is what I was dreaming about. Like, I was literally dreaming, like, when I got older, I was going to be a drug addict. You know what I mean? Like, man, I should have seen that coming then. You know what I mean? It wasn't even that great, you know? But whenever you truly find your purpose for God, and God knows that he has, that, like, you know, that he's got your yes. You know what that means? Like, you know, he knows that whenever a door comes open, he knows without a doubt you're going to walk through it for him. Not because you're perfect. Not because you know or you've done or what you know about it or because you uh, got a PhD or any kind of degrees. You know what I mean? It's because any kind of door. I'm saying, and this is for somebody in here, go ahead and accept their sorry again. Let it go again. Go ahead and be the bigger person and then let him come back in your life. Go ahead, that child that you think just ain't going to get it right, they're not going to get it right, they're never going to get it right. Let me tell you what, me and James was one of those kids. But God. But God. But it's going to take you staying in faith. It's going to take you being the bigger person and laying down your life, putting your chalk outline on the ground, for the kingdom. Sometimes our purposes are so small. It could be just that, that girl at the supermarket that you see that's in front of you that needs an extra five dollars. 
Or it could be those pair of gold earrings that you find walking. And, you know, nobody's around. But she got the Amazon package and it's got the address on it. And boy, was I wanting some gold earrings. But I was, <laughs> I walked into the door and gave them back. That happened just today, but. So, um, whenever we walked into the prison for the first time, and yeah, I had been going to the jail, but to, to go to the, back to the prison, for some of you who don't know, I spent 17 years there, on and off. And that's not jail time. 17 calendar years there, in and out of prison. And that was my home. I was okay with that. Because I was gonna, I was true to the game. I was true to it. That's what, who I thought all I was, so that's all I was getting. And um, so, walking back in there and finding what my purpose was and feeling God saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. This is what I got for you. You're going to come in here because I'm going to use you. Those 17 years, you think that we're broken, that we're lost, that, you know, like uh, everything that you, know, that you thought was just a waste of time, you're going to use it for my glory. And when you know that and you're walking into it, Boy, you couldn't tell me I wasn't flying through them gates. That's what I was dreaming about. I was dreaming about God. I was dreaming about being used by God. If you are currently living in sin, and you know what sin is, the Ten Commandments, that's just a borderline. I'm talking about you know what it's wrong, and you just can't get out of it, and you're willfully in it, you're going to be stuck. There's nothing going to be. The total sum of victory that you're going to have in your life is what you know plus what you do equals what you're going to get. And I don't know who that's for. Because you can be in the church and there can be some stuff going on. But if you need deliverance and you need prayer, now is the time. Nobody's perfect. That's what we're here for. We are aggressive Christians. We go out to the, the it doesn't matter where he calls us to go to. The church, the street, it doesn't matter. God knows he has our yes, and he knows that we're going to say, you know what, and look each other by the others. And let me, I can look anybody in their, this, their eyes in here and be like, you know what, there probably ain't nothing that y'all have done that I ain't did myself. There's freedom. There's freedom. You can walk in freedom. We go into a place of, if anybody hasn't been in jail or had been in an addiction of, these ladies, when they come to jail... They are, um, first of all, feeling, because it's probably the first time they've been sober in a long time. Everybody's left them behind. They have no hope. They don't know what's going to happen to them in their future. They don't, because, you know, they, don't, they haven't been to court yet. They have no money. They have nobody to call. They're just stuck there. And then we come in. And then this greatest opportunity for that person. I was that female. I was that person. So you can't tell me there's one person that's lost in there. There's not. Not on my watch. Not me going in there. No, 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 no. Because God has my yes. It's a place of um, a lot of sin is coming out. A lot of things need to be cast out. Jesus was known to take people to the lowest of the low. To bring about the most. To see where they were at in life. Where will you go? Where will you guys go for him? Where will you go? So, um, Jesus took his disciples to um, Caesarea Philippi. Did I say that right? Okay. <laughs> um it was known as a, a pagan cultic center. He took him there. This is where it was like the worst of the worst. Why did he take his disciples there to ask them who they thought he was? So in saying that, that's what the Lord had for me. is like When I go into the jail and I am an ambassador for him and telling them that no matter what they're doing, no matter where they're at, I've been right where they are, and there's hope, and I give them that hope, and I tell them about Jesus, it's like right then I'm asking them, who are you going to say that Jesus is? 
because that's going to be the deciding factor on the rest of their life. It was for me. Anyways, thank you guys for having us. I'm so excited to hear my husband, and I love him so much, and you guys. All right, thank you. Okay. I'm on. Huh. Y'all can hear me? Wow, I can barely hear it. That's pretty neat. First time I ever wore one of these. We love y'all's pastors. Y'all have awesome pastors that are full of love. The love of God has been shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. It's obvious. I remember coming here. Me and Sarah came up here to talk to them a little bit about possibly getting married. And I was... Man. It was tough, and uh, they made us feel so comfortable and gave us scripture that applied to the exact way we were feeling about each other, and uh, man, we knew, we knew that, that it, was, it was okay and that it, it was time. It was kind of soon, you know, and uh, we were both wild olive branches, so to speak, you know, and uh, the Lord grafted us in, and She's so determined um, about the Lord and, the, and her ministry in the jails and, and the prison. And I feed off that. Because that determination, oh man, we had it for the other side. We had it for the enemy. Uh, there wasn't anything that I wouldn't do. I was a drug addict and alcoholic for 25 years. And uh, I still would maintain an oil field job or, or sell cars or something and, and uh, try to take care of my kids and, and pay for their way, what they needed, but it wasn't really me that was there. Um, and I wasted a lot of my life. But when you, when you let God intervene in some way like that, then you completely go the other way and you go hard for Him. And so that's what I was doing and I was running along and there she was doing the same thing. You know, and, and I, I think that's a, that's a big part. And God has so much more for us, but He's already done so much. And he's just opening door after door right now in our lives. It's just, it's amazing what he's doing and what he's wanting to do. And I know it's, we don't want to be like Elijah and say, you know, I'm the only one, Lord, because he's doing that all over. That's, that's who he is. He, Oprah don't have anything on him. He's the multitasker. You know, he, he can do it. He over here, in Oklahoma, he can do it up in Tulsa. He's doing it at Hope Dealers week in and week out. He's doing it down here with the Rock Breakers. He, he, he's doing this thing, and all we can do is grab a hold and take a ride. This ride he's taking us on. The, the uh, awakening train is coming through, I feel like, and, and we need to get on board the awakening train because the church, a lot of churches, a lot of the churches are asleep, you know, or, or they'll leave out part of the gospel. And, and we, have to, we have to take the whole counsel of God. We have to let the whole counsel of God in. We have to, we have to let those areas go that he's working on in us. We, when he puts it on our heart, and I ask him all the time, and it's a dangerous prayer to say, Lord, search me, oh God. Know my heart. Try me, know my thoughts. You know, See if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And he will. Pray that prayer. He will do it. And it's not going to feel good. It's, I just want to tell you right now, it's going to be uncomfortable. And you guys, a lot of y'all know this. Uh, it's like preaching to the choir probably, but they're gone. They went back there. It looked like there was lined up like a choir over here. That's awesome is the amount of youth that's here and kids of the future. I'm excited to be here. I'm glad to be here with y'all. Uh, God gave me a little bit t to share with y'all, and uh, it shouldn't take long for me to do it, but I wanted to talk about getting free and staying free, because we're experiencing a, a lot up there at uh, the ministry that we're a part of up there, Jesus First Transformation Homes, um, at the company that I work for, we have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of good stuff. Right now in our, in our home, we have uh, eight men that, that right now is amazing because in the two and a half years I've been doing this, I, this is the first time I've had this amount of men that I can trust and I, I don't have to be there all the time. These guys are doing the right thing. They're, they're hungry for the things of God. And, and uh, that's such an amazing thing. And God knew that because me and Sarah bought a house. And, we, and God was, the whole time, He was weeding out. He was moving people around. And uh, now I'm only getting guys, it seems like, that are committed. 
I'll take a guy out there and show him this beautiful home on 10 acres and he, for some reason, to say, oh, I, you know, I, I came from the country and I want to live in the city. So he'll go to the other location that's up at the shop and it's a little bit different deal. But uh, God's doing that. He's the one at the helm of that. But I can tell you, it's so vital. It's, it's life and death right now. It's not Sunday morning for an hour and a half. This is a life and death situation. And like Brother Jameson said, we're in the end times. There's no two ways about it. I know people's been saying that for a long time. It sounds redundant, but all we have to do is look around. Look around at the economy and everything that's taking place right now. It's uh, the ship's going down. The Bible says it, okay? But what are, what are we for? What are we here for? Why did, why did God choose us to live in this time? In this time, whenever all of this is going awry. And it's to minister to others. And He needs people that are somewhat aggressive. He needs determined people that aren't afraid to stand up and tell people. Um, it's, I, I want you all to know how important it is. And I'll just give you a, a, an example. We, we had a guy, and I've had a few guys like this, that have been up there and been part of the program, and they'll go through the motions, and they'll meet us at church, and they'll do the church thing, and then they'll be at the meetings, and, and that's all well and good. But you can tell that they're not having the heart change. They're not uh, giving in to the Lord. So you, you try to get them underneath the Word of God so they'll get some kind of encounter, some kind of change, and then they'll just kind of coast or just kind of float. you know. And uh, that absolutely cannot be the case with any of us, any of the body of Christ. We have to be going in and getting that relationship, that heart change with Jesus. It's not uh, mental ascent, as Brother Hagin used to always say. It's got to be taking place in the heart. So we have to get the ball rolling in our life. We have to get that ball rolling. And of course, salvation, you know, we know that has to happen. It's vital. But after that, what? So many people get stuck right there with fire insurance and think, hey, I'm good. You know what? I'm, I'm headed to heaven. But with what's coming, we have to be prepared. We have to have the Word of God in our heart. So we have to find what's right for us, whatever time it is. You know, this last time it'd be... May 11th will be seven years that uh, I've been completely clean, sober, free. And I can tell you the Word of God is what did it. It's, a, it's amazingly alive. And Scripture says it. You know it. It says it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it is. It changed me from the inside out. In the penitentiary with 30 men around me uh, making noise. The first thing I did every day was put the Word of God in front of me and leave it there and spend, I don't know, it's probably started to be about 15 or 30 minutes and then it, it grew from there. And uh, I read every Kenneth E. Hagin book I could find in the library and he talked about saying the Ephesians prayers a thousand times and it changed his life. So I got them and I did what it said and I wrote them all down and I made them my own. I made them prayers for me. And you're praying for spiritual insight, for, to open the eyes of your understanding, for revelation knowledge and wisdom. And I'm telling you, I just dug in. So, you know, a thousand times is quite a few. If you say it twice a day, it's going to take a while. I tried to say them three, four, or five times a day. I tried to get them in there. And uh, when I finally feel like I got around that number, because I didn't know exactly, I didn't have them marked, I couldn't figure that out, but I... Something just happened one day. I opened my Bible up, and it's my other one. It's at home. I probably should have brought it, but I saw it different. I looked at it, and I'm still seeing it different. He's still growing me. Don't get me wrong, but I saw it different for the first time in there. And I looked it up in the Hebrew. It's epignosis. But just to have that little bit of insight that you get, when you see the Word and you, you hear Him speaking to you on the Word and you get so excited and you're like, wait a second, the Creator of the universe is speaking to me right now. He's speaking to me through His Word. And He's not done. He wants to do that with us every day. You know, the Bible says our minds are futile. And uh, He did that on purpose. Because, it, you know, they went back for fresh manna every day. But you couldn't take too much. You know, you couldn't. You've got to go every day because our minds are futile. We forget. We've got to go in every day and get that closeness, get that knowing, and get to knowing more. I say this a lot. Sarah likes it when I say it. I say I fell in love with a man. And I did. And his name's Jesus. And it changed me completely. 
I don't, I don't have the desire for that lifestyle anymore, the drugs, the alcohol. I just, I don't have that desire anymore, and that has to be Him. I, I, people paid big money for me to go to various rehabs in this state, and none of them worked. Uh, I was in there 40, 50 days. As soon as I got out, I went right back to it. And uh, I don't feel good about the money that was spent or anything like that, but nothing ever worked. I tried to do it for my kids. I tried to do it for a wife at the time. Never, nothing ever worked until Jesus. And I decided, when I went to prison the last time in 2016, I decided that uh, I didn't want it anymore. And as soon as I got there at A&R, there was already drugs in there. The guy that I was in the cell with, he knew somebody. So here they came, and I made my mind up. In the county jail, we had drugs. We were doing them there. But I got there, and I said no. They cut all my hair off, and I said, I'm done. So I found a piece of a Bible at A&R. You don't get a whole Bible there. I found a few pages, and I just started reading them every day, you know, and uh, said no, said no. And then I went, the first place I went was somewhere where there wasn't uh, anything really available, not much, here and there. It was spotty, and I was able to grow there. And I was able to get men together, and we put the armor on together. We had uh, Bible studies coming in through the mail in Spanish. I got for the, the guys that were uh, Latino, and we were, we were doing it. And I was supposed to leave after three months, and uh, my case manager kept coming by, oh, you'll leave any time, you'll leave any time. I stayed there 10 or 11 months and never even knew why, but God. It was all God, because when I did leave there, I was strong enough. When the stuff was everywhere, when there's tobacco and there were drugs on the yard, I said, I don't need it. I don't want none of it. I was on fire, you know, and I knew that it was God's Word that set me on fire. So I made my mind up. I wasn't going to get out. I was going to keep it in front of me, you know, and it says that. Put it in front of you. Keep it right in front of you. Whatever you have to do. If you've got to have a pocket little small Bible, that's fine. I usually carry my backpack to work, and i got my Bible in it every day. And I don't care if I'm the only one at work in Bible study in the morning that's got his Bible out. i got it out. Because there's so much more in here that I need and want to learn. The desire wells up in you that you want more. It's the new substance. It's the new wine. You know, I didn't quit drinking. I just started drinking new wine. And, and he, he's everything. He's everything we'll ever need. And we can get it right here in His Word. It's amazing how much the Word of God has done for my life. And I know you guys is too. I wrote down here that we, we don't have to clean up all the way to come and surrender to God. And one of our friends, Derek, he's said that quite a bit here lately. And it kind of stuck with me. And that's true. And that's true. And, that, and that's the salvation aspect, you know. And, and, uh, but the belief in the heart comes, you know, right then, and then it's got to grow. It's got to grow, just like Romans 12, you know, too. We have to be transformed. We have to renew our mind. We have to get in repetition-wise, just like at the gym. Get in and get in the, the Word of God and say it over and over. Uh, whatever you got to do. If you got to write them down for yourself, I wrote them Ephesians prayers down. I, I made bookmarks and we passed them out in prison. I still have those. I even brought some of the copies I, they're in the car. If anybody is interested in some daily scriptures, there's some for patients. I had a call from a guy last night that's in Okmulgee County Jail, and he wanted me to send him some scriptures, and so I, I printed those off, and so I just had them. But they're, they're a great way to start the day. You know, we got to have some stuff that's practical because, remember, it's a life-and-death situation. If we don't get in God's Word for this day, what if we're not led by His Spirit that day and we make a choice that ends us up no telling where? It can happen that fast. It's happening up there that fast with people that are easing away. You know, I don't really think as soon as it gets uncomfortable, I don't really think this program is what is for me. Of course you're not going to think that. You're not going to feel good about it. It's uncomfortable. You're being held accountable. But we have to have it. That structure, we have to have. I had to have it. I still kind of have to have it. Me and Sarah, we hold each other accountable. You know, and it's, it's something that's vital. We're losing people because they're, they're they'll stop coming to Bible study in the mornings for a little bit. And then here pretty soon, it'll get a little further away. And the enemy is playing chess. He's not playing checkers. He'll come in with just a little thought. He'll come in with just a little bit of music. 
Maybe some heavy metal or something that you used to like. He'll bring that in. You start listening to that. Oh, well, he's got you there. And then he'll bring in a little something that's familiar that goes along with that. And then before long, he's got you right back where he had you to begin with. So we have to be sharp. We have to be sharp. Be watchful. Be watchful, it says. Watch ye, it said. Be steadfast. Be immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. So we don't have to clean up all the way to come and surrender to God. But who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Let, let me just exhort you a little bit. And, and, and let me talk you into this. Because who may ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. So I, I don't, I don't want to step over here and, and, and not have the promises of God in my life. I, I mean, I'm, I'm saved I'm, and I'm on my way. I, I mean... That's what you hear a lot of people say, but the Bible suggests both. The Bible suggests uh, that he can't, you can't, nobody be taken out of his hand. We know that. But then Hebrews 10, 26, it, it absolutely talks like you can lose your salvation. So I don't know. Don't know on that. Doesn't really matter. The thing is, I don't want to just cross the line. I want to go on to glory. I want to be taught. I want to be led. I want to know how to pray. I want the power that God has. I want Him to use it through me. That's why we're here. We're His hands and His feet. We're supposed to be... These miracles are supposed to be taking place through us and through our hands for people. That's what my Bible says. Do I really believe it? D-I-R-B. Remember that. D-I-R-B. Do I really believe what the Word of God says? Because if I do, then I'm going to start doing some of these things. I'm going to start clearing some of these things out of my life. I'm going to ask God to remove some of these things. And when He shows me, man, I'm never happy. And I'm always like, oh. And I never want to say I'm wrong. I never want to say that's what you were talking That's what I prayed for. So I've got to thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for showing me that pride in me. You know, but it doesn't ever feel good. We have to be willing to step out there and not feel good so we can change. So we can be a large diameter vessel of His love. So we can be in that opportune place with the exact word that He has for somebody. You know, James and them started doing Hope Dealers and, and I jumped in there with them because uh, kind of COVID and my sister and brother-in-law, we were all going to Planet Fitness up there off Admiral and we'd bring an a enclosed trailer and we were just kind of, I call it carpet bombing. Because we'd drag clothes out of there and we'd line them up and we were cooking burgers and whoever came, eat as much as you want. They would take what they want. Well, I, And then one day we're out there and I'm fresh out of prison, hadn't been in there very long. And I know when I was on the streets, if I could keep my money in my pocket and you buy my food and I take my money and go buy my drugs or alcohol or whatever I need, I'm going to do it. So I was enabled for years and years. So these people, I'm out there and we're, we're carpet bombing. We're giving them food. One girl came up and she took four or five coats and she left. Well, you're going to trade them coats. I, I know. I know what you're about to do with them coats. But she went ahead and did that. Then a guy came up 30 minutes later and was freezing and needed a coat. And we didn't have any coats. And I said, okay, this, we can't, we're going to have to start doing something. Now we, we can't allow this. We've got to draw the line somewhere. So it's a precision, like smart bomb, like I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. I'm out here, and we're feeding. Of course, we're feeding everybody. We're not gonna, you can't eat, but everybody's eating. But the whole time, now, you've got to be, Lord, who? Lord, what would you like for me, and who would you like me to approach? And then, it's not hard that way. It, it's easy. Then we go directly to, and uh, sometimes they give you a word of knowledge for the person, you can just start speaking to them. This, this is exactly what happened to me. Their faith meter starts to rise and so does yours. And you've got more confidence for the next time you go in front of somebody that you don't know. You don't know if they're going to be violent. You don't know how they're going to act. A, a, a lot of them are, are definitely in some sort of mental anguish. And you can tell that, you know. But we can trust God to go with us in every one of those situations. We have to. And that's what it's for. Fear has no place in the Christian's life. And perfect love casts out fear. And I agree with Jameson. Everything has to come from a place of love. But I want you to know, love comes in a few different ways. Love comes by chastening. God chastens the ones that He loves. We hear chastening words from preachers that are sent. And we hear a word and our heart gets convicted. And that conviction makes us a godly sorrow is produced in us. 
And it brings about a repentance. And godly sorrow is out of love. That's from love. Love comes in a lot of different ways. And yeah, it's also, hey brother, Jesus loves you. Here's $30. And he's like, no problem. Away I go. You know, I approached a guy yesterday. I went to the quick trip and I went to get a sausage biscuit. And I never do that, but I did it. And the lady said, we have a special today for a Mountain Dew rice and a sausage biscuit for a dollar. And I said, well, I want it then. A dollar. So I went and found the right Mountain Dew thing and brought it back over there. And she said, okay. And I walked out thinking, I just got out there for a dollar, you know. And I look over and this guy's on the curb. And he says, sir, sir. And there's a vehicle between us. I could have easily just kept on walking. But I said, yeah. And he said, can you give me something to eat? I'm hungry. And I said, are you hungry? And I mean, I've been, we've been doing this for a while now. I got questions, okay? I'm going to be asking you some questions if you want. And so he said, yeah, I'm hungry. And I said, okay, come on, let's go in. And I'll, I'll buy you something to eat. I'm not going to just hand him money because I know who I was, you know? Not that everybody's the same as me, but 70% of the time, we can, we can be enabling people. So we, we started heading in there, and I said, you know, they got a special today. <laughs> a sausage biscuit and a Mountain Dew for a dollar. <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't eat, I, I eat chicken. I, about all I can eat is chicken. I only eat chicken, you know. I said, you only eat chicken, okay? God's testing me, y'all, this whole time. Because I, I'm, I've got questions. And so I said, well, what's going on, man? I said, your, your shoes are brand new, and your sweatpants are nice, and your hoodie it looks great. I mean, you're clean. And he said, well, I got me a shower yesterday. And, and I said, okay. And you got some clothes too? And he said, yeah. You know, and I said, so what's going on? Well, I lost all my money. I said, how'd you lose your money? And he said, it fell out of my pocket. <laughs> and I thought in my mind, of course, casino, I thought. But that couldn't, have, that may not have been the case. But I did, it did cross my mind. And so we walked on in there. And I talked to him, he don't eat pork, you know, and that's like, okay. <laughs> and so I sat down there and talked to him a little bit and uh, tried to find out what was going on. He'd come up from Texas and staying with some family, but they were using drugs. So he decided to leave there because he didn't want to use drugs. I mean, this guy knew everything to say, right? He knew exactly what to say. And uh, I know God was leading me to go ahead and pray with him and give him some money. And because it's totally against me to give anybody cash in that situation because he, I, I'm like, where's your car, man? You got a car around there somewhere, you know? I had to get back to work. I'm kind of on a schedule, you know? They don't mind if we minister some, and that's why I'm there because they don't mind that. But I asked him, you know, and uh, what, where was I? He's <laughs> so, so he, he's, he's sitting there, and I asked the guy, um, where was I? <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't eat pork. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I prayed with him. Here's what I did. I prayed with him, and when I took his hand, it's the first time I've ever prayed this prayer with anybody on the streets like this. For some reason, it just bubbled up, and I said, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, allow your Holy Spirit to convict our hearts of anything we're doing that's not of you. Anything that's not pleasing to you, God, I ask that you convict my brother's heart and convict my heart, God, and allow us to change. And then I knew. I was like, that wasn't me. I didn't pray that. God did that through me. So at that moment, I reached in my pocket and I had some uh, change for a 20, like $17, but I didn't know how much was there. And there's a 10, so I stood to hand him the 10. And he said, can I have the ones too? I said, Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, yeah, okay. And I got the ones out. And when I moved the ones a little, there was a five in there too. And uh, I said, yeah, man, I just gave him, gave him the five and the ones too. But I got to pray that prayer with him. I got to pray that prayer. So I know. I know in my knower because that prayer didn't come from me. That God is the Holy Ghost by the Holy Ghost has convicted his heart in the meantime. And he's felt if because he got me. I mean, it's plain and simple. He he didn't he was clothed nicely. And and they are in Tulsa, okay? They have, there'll be a car around the corner. Or there'll be somebody you'll see every day and they'll give you the same story. You know, and say, hey, I, I suppose I've got to be up here by such and such time. And two weeks later, you see them right there and they get the same story. I've got to be up there and say, hey, man, I thought you were supposed to be there last week. You know, you're late. But <laughs> so I just, I, I just want you guys, what I, I'm trying to get across today, though, is, is the importance, the importance of the heart belief, the importance of the heart change. 
because uh, I wanted to read a little bit out of Luke 21. Wait, let me read this proverb first. Um, I got, God gave me this a couple of weeks ago in Proverbs 3 and in Proverbs 2. It, they say the same thing, the first few verses. And man, I really got, I got for me a revelation, which some of y'all may have already had or, or some of y'all haven't. But it says, my son, do not forget my law. Do not forget my law. The law is important. The law was there for a reason. It was in place. But let your heart keep my commandments. Let your heart keep my commandments. We're, we're going to let our heart keep. I'm not doing it because it's written down. It's a rule book. I'm doing it because I fell in love with the King of Kings. And I want to do it because just like my earthly father, when I was growing up, I want him to be pleased with me. I want him to say, well done. Son, so I do it out of this heart change. And I feel like too many of us get to that spot and we don't pick up the Word and we don't allow that heart change to take place because it doesn't happen like drive through service. It's a process. It's a daily grind. Get in there every day and there's going to be distractions. Oswald Chambers called it the plague of flies. When you get on your knees and you're ready to pray and then all this stuff, you know, did I leave the iron on? What's going on outside? Why is the dog barking? And my phone's ringing and all this stuff. Got to get it away. Got to get that stuff away. God honors that when we get there and we get in that place like Jameson said and we stay there a while. Stay there a little while. And He also honors the time that you're resisting the enemy while you're in that place. And He will honor you. And it's an amazing and beautiful thing. It, you never know what He's going to drop in your spirit. What He's going to impart to you. You never know what He'll do in that secret place. It's so exciting. Everybody, I never wanted to do this life. I was so the partier. And all I said, I want to have fun. You know, I'm carrying trash when I was a kid, seven years old. My dad's out there. And uh, I looked at him, this trash in my hand. And I said, Dad, if it ain't fun, I don't want to do it. And he said, all right, let's go fishing. I threw the trash down and we went fishing, you know. And that's who I was. But this is the most exciting life, the funnest life, and the wool was just pulled over my eyes. The enemy told me that it was not fun. He told me that it wasn't cool. He told me that it's not popular, which that part of that gives it maybe a half-truth, you know, because a lot of people just don't want to lay down that life. They don't want to lay down the sin. But it's so important that we realize, and he's always trying to tell us it's not a good life. It's not a fun life. You're living a boring life. And it's just like the rest of them Christians and this and that. But the opportunities are limitless. And our God has so much for us if we'll just get in that secret place. So on down it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Write them on the tablet of your heart. If you have the Word of God in your heart, people can see it. They can see it on you. They need that. People need to see that fire. We got to give them that fire. And the more time we're with Jesus, I don't care how many, which minister you like to listen to or, or you like to go and see, but the ones that spend the most time with Jesus, you can tell. You can absolutely tell because they've got a word in season for him that is weary. And a lot of times that's me. And I'll hear it and be like, that's from God. I know that was from God. So I not only want to get underneath the word that's coming from somebody that spends that kind of time with Jesus. I want to get to where I can spend that kind of time with Jesus too. I want Him to change me more and make me into that vessel of love. So on, in 2 it says the same thing. It's all through the Bible, and I overlooked it for a long time. You know, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures. The Word of God is true. And this is talking about gems and jewels and things in the Spirit that, that we can't even fathom. But we can attain these things spiritually. I got hung up on this reel yesterday of a water buffalo. 
And uh, these big leopards or big cats, first it was just one, and then it ended up being about five of them. And these cats had to be 200 pounds. I mean, they were huge. And he wasn't, he was a probably, he was, wasn't a full-grown water buffalo. He, he looked like a younger, you know, but he was so strong because these cats were just mauling and grabbing him and grabbing him everywhere. The stomach, the hind parts, and just trying to pull like our bulldog, you play tug war, and he'd get all his weight and try to jerk. And they're trying to jerk this water buffalo to the ground. And I got in my, I, was, I felt terrible. If I would have been there with a rifle, I would have been picking them cats off. But that's life, right? But God told me, He said, that's what it looks like in the Spirit a lot of times. we got to recognize that there's a spiritual world going on above our heads, fighting over our souls all the time that we can't see. And these cats trying to pull this water buffalo down. And prayer and things like that are weapons are what looses us from that to get free and stay free. And that water buffalo would jump and he would buck and all them cats would... And I mean two, four, six, eight. That's a thousand pounds of cats on you. They're big. They were big. And they were shaking. And you know, I, I only have seen this or watched this a couple of times in years. And it both happened in the last week. The other one that I saw, it was getting mauled by some cats. And uh, the, the rest of the herd was just running, man. They kept on running. And, and this one's getting eight. And finally... One of the other ones turned around and started coming back. Coming back for that sucker and started knocking them cats off of him. And when that first one turned around and started coming back, then the rest of them came back. And they started circling them. Cats ran off and that water buffalo was like... And we, at our church, there's been such a big... God's been showing me and telling me unity. Unity. One can put a thousand, two can put ten thousand. And when we start gathering together... That's when the enemy has not a near chance with us because we walk in the power of God that way. It's not a standalone deal. That's pride. That's pride if you think it's just you. It's not. You've got to have other members of the body of Christ. We're all parts, all pieces. Or the house, it talks about the building that's fitly, the stones hewn to per perfection. And we're built together as one. In the body of Christ, that's how it moves. God showed me one time this large, uh, it was an was a international harvester. And we were all small implements on this. You know, my dad and them, they kind of ranching and farming. But uh, I don't care if you're a cotter pin on the international harvester that's going forth. You know what I mean? But it's the body of Christ moving. And we move like that as a team. And then we can't be stopped. Nothing can stop us. We have to be unified. It's, a, it's something we got to do. Okay, let me just read for y'all this Luke 21. Because it's exciting. And it's taking place right now. Um, 21, 25 is where I want to start. But 26 is where I really wanted to. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them from fear. And the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. So men's hearts are going to fail them for fear and for the expectation of what's coming. Unless, unless we're in that secret place every day. Unless we're spending that time with Jesus and we're getting to know Him as well as we do our neighbor, as well as we do our wife, better, better than we do, you know? We got to get in there. We got to get in there. They say, get in there. Just do it. I know you're afraid, but go pray for Him. I know He's dragging one leg and it looks like He'll bite you, but go pray for Him, you know? You have to. And He'll protect us when we do. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, we weren't scared when we got in the cop car, we always used to say, you know. Yeah, when we were in the midst of it. You wasn't scared when you was running that hard to go find that sack you had to have, you know. 
walking around like a puppet. I mean, I went everywhere he told me to go. He knew I'd be at that house over there at 3 p.m. that afternoon picking up this little baggie of whatever. And it's no wonder I got all these scars on my face and like to die several times because I went exactly where the enemy was showing me. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now led by the Holy Ghost now. We're led by the Spirit of God and we're the sons of God. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. <laughs> and those things that can't be shaken may remain. But the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Shaken. This is true. Do I really believe? Do I really believe? Because this is going to happen. And happen pretty soon. It says... You said shake it the other day too. I remember... Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads. Alyssa sings the song, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, 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 and let the King of glory in. In. I can't do it like her. But it's amazing. And that's what you touched on when you did the offering early, brother. And uh, I looked at him as soon as you said it because... We list Psalm 24. That's a, one of her, my favorite. She's got a lot of good ones. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. So we, the, we have to consider the goodness and the severity of God. The balance has to be there. The goodness and the severity. Because that, the Bible says that great and terrible day of the Lord. So in 34 it says, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. So it'll come as a snare for every one of us. For every one of us. But if we're built up on our most holy faith, if we've been praying in the Holy Ghost, if we've been spending time with the Lord in prayer daily, in meditation, if we've been getting to know Jesus more and more, when He comes back, we're ready. we got oil in our lamps, and it's on. You know, we, the, the most dangerous soldier on the battlefield is the one that's not afraid to die. And if I really believe what the Word of God says, and I have life eternal, what am I afraid of? What am I scared of? I want to get to the place to where that is completely and positively true in my heart. Because this also says we'll be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted for His name's sake. We might as well just get ready. It doesn't matter though, because we're going to glory. So whatever happens... You know, we'll receive a crown for that too. We can't deny Him. We've got to stand. We've got to stand. Well, I love y'all. And I love coming down here. And uh, we love y'all's pastors. And Sarah calls them a lot about me. And, <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and then she'll come back and tell me, Colleen's mad at you. And, I was, and that hurts my heart, you know. But I know she's fibbing now. But at first I was like, what do you mean? Why? She's like, she I said, what about Dale? He's not mad at me. <laughs> what we want to do, though, is we'd like to pray for anybody that wants prayer for any type of pain or sickness or, or any kind of uh, foul report you might have got from the doctor or uh, from the enemy. We can pray for that, too. And uh, we got Jameson here, too, and, and uh, whoever wants to help pray. Please do that. If anybody would like to get prayer, we'd love to give some. Thank you all for letting us come. Um.